Welcome to our lecture online. Before we solve the principle of least action mathematically, let's first show you some more examples of how to actually use the Lagrangian and use the Lagrangian with the concept that this equation here is equal to zero. And we're going to do it on some simple examples. Here, the next example is the sliding disk. And we're going to do it in two parts. The first part, we're going to find the, differ the differential equation that is derived from this equation, realizing that the Lagrangian is defined as the difference of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So we're starting with the disk at the very top of this incline, and it's sliding down. The incline has an angle theta, and as it goes down the incline, we assume that the positive x distance is, to the, is down the slope of the incline, so that the velocity on the incline is equal to x dot. Also, it starts at initial height h, Notice that the center mass will be at h plus r, and so the initial potential energy will be mg times h plus r. So now what we need to do is find two equations, an equation representing the kinetic energy, an equation representing potential energy in terms of the variable x. x is defined as the distance going down the slope, positive distance as you go down the slope along the hypotenuse. So, potential energy, or let's say, we'll start with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, by definition, is equal to one-half the mass times the velocity squared. In this case, the velocity, as the, as the disk slides down the hill, notice there's no rolling, the velocity is equal to x dot, so therefore this is equal to one-half times the mass times x dot squared. There's our kinetic energy. Now for the potential energy. The potential energy will be equal to the initial potential energy when it starts minus the potential energy as the object goes down the incline. So minus the change in the potential energy, which is going to be a function of position along the incline. So in this case, the potential energy will be equal to mg times h plus r. That will be the initial potential energy. Now, as the as the the object slides down at some point, as it's gone down a distance x along the incline, it will have lost this amount of height. And notice that this height here will be equal to x times, if this is the angle theta, x times the sine of theta. And so we have to subtract that from the original potential energy because it's lost potential energy. So it's going to be minus mg times the change in height, which would be x times the sine of theta. And so you can see that it'll be mg times h plus r minus mg times x sine of theta, which essentially we could actually put inside. So we could write this potential energy is equal to mg times h plus r minus x times the sine of theta. I need to do this. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and find the partial of L with respect to x dot, take the derivative with respect to time, and take the partial of L with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that next. So first, the partial of L with respect to x dot. And so you can see that, oh, I'm not ready yet. I first have to write the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian, which is going to be equal to, hmm, let me go ahead and put it up here because otherwise I think I might be able to squeeze it in there. Let me try so the Lagrangian is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So this is going to be equal to one half mx dot squared minus this quantity right here, which is equal to mg times h plus r minus x times the sine of theta. All right, so now I have the Lagrangian defined. Now I can go ahead and take the partial derivative with respect to x dot. Notice the only term that has an x dot in it is here, so that will be equal to, when I multiply times the coefficient, I get 2 times 1 half, which is 1. We get mx dot. So that's the partial of L with respect to x dot, which is the velocity along the incline. Then I take the derivative with respect to time. So the dt of the partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to the ddt of m x dot, and of course the ddt of that will be equal to m times x double dot, and of course that's the acceleration along the incline. 
then I have to find the partial of L with respect to X. The partial of L with respect to X is equal to, of course, this does not have an X in it, only this has an X in it. So then we have a minus times a minus, which is plus. So we have an MG times X times the sine of theta, but take the derivative of X, we get one. So that becomes MG times the sine of theta. Now notice m is a constant, g is a constant, sine of theta is a constant because theta is just the angle and it doesn't change. So now we can write this equation right here. So now we can say that this portion which is mx dot, mx double dot I should say, minus mg sine of theta must therefore equal to zero. And then you can see that both terms have an m in it, which is a constant, which means that x double dot minus g sine theta is equal to zero. And there's a differential equation that defines the motion of that object sliding down the incline. Essentially, we have the acceleration. If we put the acceleration of the other side, you can think of it as acceleration is equal to, move the other side, g times the sine of theta, and of course that is in a familiar equation if we've done some mechanics before where things slide down the incline, the acceleration with mu equal to zero is always equal to g sine theta. So it looks like we did get the right answer. Now for part two, we're actually going to take that and we're going to manipulate it and use to find the equation of kinematics describing the motion as a function of time going down the incline, so that will be part two of the problem.